So good evening and welcome back to the channel. In tonight's video I'm going to be processing some audio that I captured recently with my Tascam X8 and an ambisonic microphone. Now the reason why I'm going to be doing this in Reaper is because my ambisonic my, or my field recorder, the X8 I should say, doesn't have any facility to process ambisonic audio so unlike my zoom f6 i can convert from ambisonic a format to b format and then i can go off and do whatever i like with it whereas with the x8 as it records individual or each individual capsule in separate files i'm going to have to take them into reaper and then process them manually myself so i'm going to be using reaper with a set of ambisonic plugins called the IEM plugin suite, which is free of charge. And it's a very simple, quick, straightforward process, and it shouldn't take us long at all. So this is how I go about processing ambisonic audio in Reaper. So the first thing that I do is come down to the master down the bottom left here, change the tr track channels from two to four, and then I double click and make four separate tracks. Each one of these tracks will have four track channels. So we just hit that striped routing button, go to track channels and then choose four. And then we just do that for all four of our tracks. So just like that. The next thing we're gonna just highlight all of these tracks. You can shift and left click to do that. And then we right click and then come down to move tracks to folder, new folder track. I just like to name my folder track to something like uh, ambisonic mix. Then we need to also change the track folder from two channels to four. So basically everything in the mixer section needs to have four track channels okay for this to actually work so now we're going to go to fx that's on the track folder um, and then we're going to type in iem and then we're going to want the binaural decoder so that's going to sit on the very top of our mix and then each one of these individual tracks or the child tracks they're going to have the stereo encoder put on them. So that's one for every track below the folder track. OK, so just like that. There we go. We have all four now. So this is essentially just a panner and we can place our mono audio anywhere we like within the soundscape. So we've got some controls on the right hand side here we've got the azimuth which is pretty much what i always use then we have the we have the width and i'll show you how to use that in just a minute that's quite handy then we also have the elevation and roll which i don't usually use because that's mainly for people that are doing vr video and that type of thing so i don't really touch them and it doesn't really do anything if you do tinker around with them especially if you're converting into stereo afterwards it's not really going to play a part at all in the final render so okay let's go and grab some audio so here we have some audio i've named this in accordance to which channel the x8 was recording at the time so that's front left up that's front right down and then we have back left down and then we have back right oh back right up bring that in here we go okay so if i just play this without any decoder on you can have a listen to that and now i'll turn it on So the first thing that I like to do is I like to mute all the channels all but one, go to the FX and then I'm going to just solo each one and just tweak where in the sound field I want that piece of audio to sit and then I'll play it all together and then if I need to tweak it from there then I will. So for this one I'm going to move over to the left. And then we'll do the 
same for front right down. In fact, I need to turn that up a little bit more. And then back left down. Probably going to have this one sitting sort of at the back. See how that sounds. And then back right up and let's give that a go let's just leave that there for now let's just play it all together and see how it sounds so i think that sounds pretty decent it sounds close or exactly the same actually as what it sounded like when I recorded it on the day so for me that's actually good enough because that's all I can really ask for I don't generally process my audio that takes it away from its original state I like to keep it as close to original as possible so the only thing other thing I will tend to do is maybe just add a little bit of EQ so I'll use the whoops need to add that so I'll add the IEM multi EQ and this this again will sit on our ambisonic mix folder track so let's just give us just a touch of EQ in the highs just to bring out that wet watery wishy-washy splashy sort of sound Just add a fairly aggressive high pass here just to see what that sounds like on the low end. I think I'm just going to keep a little bit of low end in there because I usually find that low end is a bit like sonic glue really it just helps to glue everything together so quickly check out over here um yeah to be honest i'm fairly happy with that i might end up going on and tweaking things here and there a little bit more but overall I'm fairly happy happy with it what I would usually do now is I would render it out and then probably leave it a day and then come back to it and have a listen because with a fresh pair of ears you can usually pick up things that don't necessarily sound right but did at the time of editing so what I would now do is if I was going to uh, render down as a stereo file I would obviously select stereo and then add any metadata that I need to and then hit render and job done however if I was going to render an ambix file because the IEM suite is an ambix um, format B suite of tools so if I uncheck the binaural decoder and now render that out we're going to have an ambix file however there are just two things i need to tell you about that so if i go to render what we need to do is change those channels from stereo to four because it is a four channel track and then once we have rendered that reaper isn't going to add any type of metadata to tell any other software it's an ambix file so what you're going to need to do you're going to have to inject some code into the render so any other application that can read ambisonic audio will know it is actually an ambisonic track so the way you do that is you go to you download some free software called meta data edit i think oh no sorry bwf meta edit I think it is I'll put a link in the description and then there's 
a small line of code that you just add in to one of the lines um, in the file. You save it, and then if you use to say open it up in the Zoom Ambisonic Player app, it would see that it was an Ambix file, and then you can go and do your thing. It is a very simple thing to do. It's not, you know, it doesn't take more than a couple of minutes just to do, but I will leave all the bits and pieces you need to know about that in the description. So if you do want to render out an Ambix file, check the description because I have all the relevant information in there you need to be able to successfully have rendered an Ambix file. So that is pretty much it. It's literally that simple creating this type of um, this type of audio. But if you've got any questions at all, then please do drop a comment and I will endeavor to get back to them. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon.